All right, so one solution is you can shrink your creature down and then you can find a new way of framing it and then crop it down. But I don't love that solution for, for my creature, for where I am. So I'm going to not use that position. Another way, of course, you can scale and angle it with free transform. I might angle it a little bit with free transform, but I kind of like it with its foot up like that. And then you kind of place it on the ground somewhere. But we can actually change the, the pose of our creature because we, we design them with a silhouette in mind. If we take the smart object of our creature and then we go to edit, instead of free transform, you'll see that there's something called puppet warp. And puppet warp is made for creature elements. So if we click on puppet warp, what it does is it gives us, like it's a 3D model, a polygon mesh over our creature. I'll zoom in so you can see it. On this polygon mesh, we can set pins. This is for animation. This is how you would animate a 3D model. So for instance, if I want this foot to stay here, I'm going to pin that foot there. You see how now my icon's a little thumbtack. And then the reason we had to sketch think of, thinking of the anatomy is we have to understand how we want to move this like a doll. Think of it like a grommet doll. Those little dolls you cut out of paper and then you put like something through the joints and then you can pivot them in two dimensions. So I'm going to put a pin right at the snout and then I'm going to put a pin right at where the, the spine meets the head. Now because I've pinned it here and I've pinned it here, now I can grab one of those pins and I can <laughs> make him dance. Do, 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 right? What other pins do I need? I need the shoulders, because the rib cage does not move. And then the wings. I can do the, the tips of the wings. I can do the joints. And then I can do the knees. I can do the ankles. I can do the pelvis. It just depends what kind of pose you want. So for instance, by pinning it this way and understanding the anatomy, I can move the leg and position the foot in a different way that's totally believable to the anatomy of this creature. And I can always do Command Z if I want to undo something I did. I can move the wing. This will be helpful in animating these creatures later. And you see how it subtly moves the chest as well. I can move the tail. And I can move the head like I showed. So I don't want to pin that. If you hold down Option, you can unpin as well to repin somewhere else. So I'm going to pin the back of the head here. Maybe unpin this and just pivot it on the neck. Not quite rotating the way I want it to on the neck, but. So Puppet Warp can help you adjust the pose. It's much, much more accurate than the regular free transform warp because it's mapped to the cutout shape. So this was a new position versus this one, right? So I can use my history, kind of toggle back and forth between, decide which one I want that or this or a new a new puppet warp so let me go ahead and do that puppet warp you'll see a smart filter on that smart object and let's try a different puppet warp here so edit puppet warp going to do it along the spine and then going to pin the foot Pin the joint, pin the joint, pin the pelvis, pin the ankle. Just move it out a little bit, maybe a little bit longer. 
just like that. A little bit more elegant. Pin, pin the wing. Have it stretch out. Remember, the pins are the things that are not going to move. And so you're warping and stretching between those other things. I'm going to pull this back a little bit to give a little bit more space for the head. I can make the chest rise and fall. Yeah, I think that works. And I can tilt the head back a little bit. So that versus this. So now I have two different options of poses, or really three options. This, this, <laughs> which I do need to bring down and actually have touched the ground. So between those two, kind of like this one better. And I can just keep trying it, right, in different ways. Now another option is to put it behind something in your foreground. And you can always just sink your creature back through your layers, through the atmosphere, you know, even until it's in the background. Kind of a kaiju creature peeking out. I'm going to turn off auto-select here. So I can have him kind of looking through the building. That's kind of a cheat. It would be kind of cool to have his snout coming in between here, though. He's like this giant bird of the, the gothic jungle. We have the resolution for it. But basically, you sink it through your layers until you think it's positioned well. And it's kind of nice to put it behind like a foreground rock, like I showed at the beginning when I first placed the creature. What I think I'm going to do is use this one just to really show it off. And then I'm just going to sink this down behind this layer. So I'm going to move it down underneath the atmosphere. Actually, maybe not, because it's getting a little too hard to see. So for now, I might keep it above the atmosphere. I'm going to right-click and rasterize the puppet warp. And I'll get... I'll, I'll leave my smart object there just in case I need it again. But I can always bring it in from my assignment to PNG. But I've changed the position of it, right? You can see that the foot has really changed. Okay, now I've angled it. I've placed it. Now I need to sink it into this environment. So if its foot is touching the ground, let's say it's touching right there, what goes in front of it? I want this flower to go in front of it. So I want to find that layer right there. And then what I want to do is internally composite. So I want to grab with my lasso any part of that layer that I think is overlapping that foot. Then I want to duplicate Command J and then move that layer up above my creature. Like so. Then what I want to do is use my eraser and just where the creature's foot is, I want to kind of reveal it. And it doesn't need to be a 100% eraser. I just want to really control this detailed interaction between my creature and its environment. Yeah, I think that's it.
So now that foot is behind that flower. Now let's look at where it's touching the ground here. I want to go to that foreground and then I want to grab some stuff that goes like between the toes, goes around it. And I want to do the same thing, duplicate it, move it up above my creature. So here it is. And then use my eraser to integrate it. So now I've got like these little fronds going between the toes, helping make sense of it all. Now both of those are pretty sharp, so I'm going to use a 100% eraser, large, soft edged to erase around the edges just because they're above the texture fill, so they appear sharper, which is a kind of a nice effect, honestly. But you don't want to have any of those hard edges blending in. Once you get rid of the hard edges, you can take down your opacity, you can blend it in more. And then because both of these are things covering up my creature, I can now merge these layers together using Command E or Layer Merge Layers. So these are the, the elements covering up the feet of my creature. And then I can always erase away from them anywhere where my creature isn't there. But i got to be careful. I don't want the, my creature to poke through. So that syncs the creature's anatomy in. Now we have to worry about lighting and coloring. So I go to my creature layer. What's the first thing I should do? Just easy direct adjustments. So in this video, we're doing puppet warp. We're putting stuff in front of our creature to kind of integrate its feet. And then I'm going to do direct adjustments. I start with levels. We're trying to match the lighting. And honestly, I think the, the mid-tone levels should probably be a little bit brighter. And the, the shadows should be a little limited. Of course, Atmosphere can do that too. So I'll just brighten it up slightly. Maybe even limit the highlights just a little bit. Next, after levels, we do color balance. I'm going to check the mid-tones. See if it needs to go a little bit more towards the reds. It does seem to. A little bit more towards the blues, just a tiny bit. A little bit more towards the greens, just a bit. Highlights, let's warm those up just slightly. Shadows, let's cool those down. So again, just like when we were compositing, this is just another type of compositing. Those adjustments, levels, this is how it started. Levels will help it match. Color balance will help it match, even if it's subtle. We can try hue saturation and just see. But I think that's going to be a little too much. What we might want to do is either saturate it or desaturate it. And I actually want to saturate it a little bit because I have some pretty strong saturated colors in this foreground. Now I want to try, now that I've adjusted its, its lighting, I'm going to take both of these layers, both the, the creature layer and the stuff that's in front of its feet, and I want to sink those beneath some of this texture fill. And I have two layers of texture, so I sink it behind that one. It looks pretty good, but then I might erase it away at a low opacity with a large soft edged eraser, you know, where the creature is, especially what's closest to the eye. And I might even try sinking it below another layer 